In the late 70s, the DIY punk scene started to feel its inevitable hangover from partying a little bit too angrily and gave birth to a new kind of punk. A sadder punk. A more experimental punk. A more philosophical punk. Today, we're going to dip our toes into the avant-garde world of post-punk. This is How to Sound Like, where I take a bassist sound and then break it down to show you how to emulate that bassist tone. Today, we're looking at Joy Division's Peter Hook, an important figure in the British post-punk scene in the late 70s, early 80s. Even if you've never heard of Joy Division before, I can almost guarantee you'd recognize their iconic t-shirt. And if you haven't heard them before, I highly recommend it. They make incredible music. It's really brooding and experimental, super cool stuff. For today's episode, I've chosen a specific song, Love Will Tear Us Apart. It's probably Joy Division's most popular song, and it features this really haunting melody, really driving drums, and a really, really cool and different bass line. Peter Hook is playing really high up on the neck and then using droning open strings to form these beautiful shimmering chords that sort of follow the vocal melody. The bass that he's prominently using during this era is a Yamaha BB-1200, and you can see it pretty clearly in the music video. Side note, I know that music videos can be a pretty unreliable source of what gear someone is using, so I always try and double verify things. Peter Hook's Wikipedia article, as well as this fan-made website from ages ago, both list the BB-1200 under his gear. Ultimately though, I'm going to defer to my ears because that's kind of the whole point of this thing. And what I'm hearing is a P-Bass, which the Yamaha BB-1200 is. I love the beautiful two-tone cherry burst finish, and the reverse split coil pickup is really interesting. If you've never seen a reverse split coil or really noticed it, here's what the deal is. On a reverse split coil bass, it's backwards to your typical thing. The thinking is that by moving the pickup on the lower end closer to the bridge will give you a tighter sound on your lower strings and conversely, a fatter lower sound on your higher strings. And this is all because of how strings vibrate. In the middle of the string, it's gonna vibrate wider, and then closer to the bridge, it'll vibrate tighter. This is something that I talk about in more depth in my Cool Towns Without Effects videos. I'll put that in the card thing up top if you wanna go check that out and learn how to use that in your own music. So getting back to Peter Hook, I don't have a reverse split coil P bass, but this Squire Classic Vibe Precision I have strung up with round wound sounds pretty close. On the amp side of things, Peter Hook used high watt amps, which I'm actually completely unfamiliar with. They're not super common, at least here in the US, so I've actually never used one. To me, the character that I'm hearing on this song is slightly overdriven, mid-scooped, and just a little bit spanky. If you wanted to try this out on whatever amp you own, what you can do is boost the bass and the treble and then reduce the mids. What this does is it kind of creates this smiley face on an EQ graph, so that's why they call it a smiley face or a mid-scoop. It's like somebody took an ice cream scoop and pfft, scooped out the middle of it. Using this EQ plus a P bass played with a pick will get you pretty close to Peter Hook sound regardless of what amp you use. Moving over to Logic and trying to recreate the sound there, I started going through the guitar amps rather than the bass amps because what I was hearing was a lot more spanky and a lot less bassy. Now there is a preset in Logic that's a copy of the high watt amp, but it's a copy of a different model, the DR-103, rather than the high watt 100 model that Peter Hook used. Uh, hey, Editor Andrew here. Uh, apparently those are actually the same model of amp. I don't know how I got that wrong. But, but what I did get right is that it is a guitar amp and not a bass amp. And, um, yeah, again, still to my ears, the, the Logic model doesn't sound anything like what I was going for. So, take that for what it's worth. Alright, back to the video. For my experimentation, I found that I liked the boutique retro amp sound better for this. And then we can pair that with a Vox speaker cabinet because that's what Peter Hook used. Unfortunately, we can only go up to a 112, which is quite a bit smaller than the 118 that Peter Hook used, but I won't tell if you don't. When I first started researching this project, I was certain that I was hearing chorus on the bass and almost everybody that does other covers on YouTube also uses chorus. And on Peter Hook's gear page, it also lists this EHX uh, clone, which is a chorus pedal. But when you hear the isolated bass track from the song, there's either no chorus or it's mixed in there really, really low. Either way, what I did is I did add this one chorus here, but I dialed it in really, really subtly so that it's actually more felt than heard. So now we've got the P bass, the picking technique, the amp, and the chorus pedal, and all of that together sounds like this.
thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. If you want to see the full cover of this song, I'll have that linked up above and down below. If you want to try out this Logic preset for yourself, you can download that on my Patreon page. And so now I'm asking you, which bass player would you like to see me cover next? Leave a comment down below with your suggestions. I make a new How to Sound Like video every month, so subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I make more of these. Again, thank you so much for your support. I've seen a lot of growth and positivity this summer, and I couldn't do it without you. If you're not subscribed at this point, it's okay. You, you don't have to subscribe. But it'd be a lot cooler if you did. I am AMP the bass player, and I need a pizza!